is the Big O Show. This is the Big O Show. Alex asks, uh, do you think uh, Belichick's success is a cause of Brady? No, he's a great coach, man. Uh, but Brady helped him win the titles, yes. Without Brady, he doesn't win the titles, okay? He'd be lucky to have one. But Brady's a monster, and you got to give him a lot of credit. But no, no, Belichick's still a damn good coach. Don't get me wrong here. He's one of the great ones of all time. If not the best. You've said it in the past, and I like the way it was termed. He makes up for all of the Patriots' shortcomings, and it isn't like they didn't have shortcomings. But Brady (laughs) made up for it, right? A ton. A ton. But uh, I got to tell you, nobody is enjoying the Patriots' demise more than I am. Okay? Um I just, to me, I, I was, I'm just so tired of watching them win, and the the move with Brady, I just knew it would explode, like like it would be an exploding cigar on Belichick, and I'm on record here all year saying they're going to struggle to be eight and eight. I, I w- there were a lot of people that thought they were going to be really impactful with Cam Newton. And I was laughing at those people, okay? I, I don't know if they're all going to come out now and say, hey, you know, I really thought that the acquisition of Cam Newton, and, and, and th- the problem was, did you watch Cam? Do, do you see him? Because he's not a good passer. So what did you expect, that he was going to continue to run on the NFL? It, it gets to a point where it gets old, and it's easy to defend. And it's easy to figure out. Lamar Jackson, who's a much more dynamic runner than Cam Newton ever will be, Cam is a power guy. But Lamar is lightning fast. And yet they figured him out too. He's still getting some yards running, but he's not killing you anymore with the arm. Or they, they, they figured out the few routes that he throws, and then that's it. And they take him completely out of his game. You know, so I am loving the demise of the Patriots. And I know that Belichick's a a very, one of the greatest coaches, if not the greatest coach of all time. But I, I still think that without a quarterback, your team has to be incredibly dominant in order to win it all. And the Patriots were never that team. And they had several defections at the beginning of the year because of COVID-19. I just, I'm not surprised with any of this. I didn't believe in the Patriots, and I certainly did not believe in them just because they acquired Cam Newton. That that was just weak. We we have something that's right up this alley. Oh, yeah? What do you got? This This is from last night. Okay. It's over in New England. Uh, I, that's not my call. Uh, I'm just doing what I'm asked. I'm just still going to each and every week with the mentality to keep getting better, and that's what I plan on doing. You're going to stick with Cam next week at quarterback? Yeah, thank you, Mr. Mike. I'm really glad you asked that. Cam's our quarterback. You know, we were out coach, out played, out everything, really. They, they did a good job in all the areas. And, you know, we just have to, you know, all do a better job. You know, start with me. But, so we didn't do anything well enough to win tonight, so we all got to do a better job. There you go. He's as stubborn as it gets. Now, I think part of this is I don't think he has any confidence in Jared Stidham. Stidham came in and um, it was 5 of 7 for 27 yards. He's green, man. He didn't play a lot last year. It, it's just, and I think that if he once he benches Cam, it's a terrible look for for uh, Bill. Because you altered everything you did in the off season, right? You kept talking up Jared Stidham. You went and signed Brian Hoyer, which again, I remember was at the beginning of the year there were 
Who was it? Well, you know, Brian Hoyer's a veteran. Brian Hoyer sucks. I don't give a crap that he's a veteran. That was, it was like yesterday. Did you, did you watch the game yesterday? Well, you know, the, the Patriots can't win with this limited offense. Dude, just say it. The Patriots can't win with a limited Cam Newton. Not a limited offense, a limited quarterback. It's just like the crap with Brian Hoyer. Well, Brian Hoyer is a veteran. That's just code for, I don't really want to tell you what I really think about Brian Hoyer, but let me find some kind of a positive feature. He's a veteran. He knows the offense. That's what they said about Brian Hoyer. Well, you know, he knows the offense. He's been in the Patriots. He's a veteran. Yeah, yeah, but can he play? Well, you know, that's a whole other subject, you know. I mean, come on. Dude, well, last night, limited offense, limited off. They must have said limited offense like four or five times throughout the broadcast. And I'm laughing my ass off. It's like, you know, bro, you guys can grow a pair of cojones and just say what you want to really say. This is what I, I hate about this corporate-led crap that we've got going on in our business. Those guys are on the air, and they're a bunch of cowards because the league has got, they're in bed with the NFL. They pay the rights fees, so they don't want to be pissing people off by actually telling the truth. Because you're not insulting anybody, and I'm, and I'm talking about anyone's intelligence. I don't care if Cam feels insulted. That's his problem, not mine. He's the limited one. He's got. He's going to have to deal with the comments, but that's that's kind of this whole crap. Well, we can't be honest. Oh, limited offense. Get the hell out of here. Limited quarterback. Terrible decision by Bill Belichick. That's what you got to say. Bill let Brady go and had no plan to replace him. That's what you got to say. Bill had a mister, misguided confidence in Cam Newton. That's what you got to say. Cam Newton is not a good passer. That's what you got to say. Notice that the one receiver that catches balls last night was Nikhil Henry, the big target. Well, the, the Patriots are loaded with midgets at wide receiver. Tom Brady was accurate. Cam Newton is not. That's what you got to say. But it's, you know, it's one of those things that they're afraid of saying the truth. In the middle of all the Lamar Jackson hype last year, did you ever see me get on that hype bandwagon? Nope. Stuck to my guns. I told you, he's not much of a passer, and eventually he'll get exposed. Guess what's happened all year? Where are all those people thinking that, that Lamar Jackson was the second coming at quarterback? And he's actually still fortunate, let me tell you. Not that I wish it, but the injury's coming. You can't run that much and not get injured as a quarterback. Eventually, somebody's going to catch you. So not only does he get exposed as a poor passer, eventually somebody's going to break him in half, because they do it to RG3, they do it to all quarterbacks that live on their legs. Cam Newton is one of them. They've broken his big ass in half already. And that's why his game doesn't fly. Because in the end, you're not going to run in this league for a living at quarterback. I'm sorry. You, you might be able to get away with it for a couple of years, but eventually you're going to pay a price. Got a, got a question for you here. Yeah. Because he was, on the coaching market, one of the hottest commodities. Does this hurt Josh McDaniel's stock? No. Because of what's happened to the offense this year? No, because... It, it if, doesn't re totally reflect on him? Yeah, it, it's Belichick's decision to bring Cam in, and you can't make chicken salad out of chicken. S. Yeah, I think you know where I was going. Oh, yeah. Okay. So, is yeah. it that a uh, what's his name's uh you know that is a guy that loved to be at the racetrack? That that is Gary Stevens. Oh, okay. Gary Stevens. Kevin Ding 
reporter for, I think it's now the Orange County Register, I believe, in Los Angeles. He's been on the Lakers beat for about 15 years easily. And uh, he was working for the Miami Herald. So uh, the offense was struggling under Jimmy. And Kevin uh, asked Gary Stevens, no, it might have been, it might have been the early part of Wanstead, not Jimmy. Yeah, I think that's what it was. It was the early first year, two or three of Wanstead. And, you know, they had offensive issues. Their defense was special. But the offense, whenever Gary Stevens was there, okay, before those two, I think, had a difference. And, and they broke up. Um, so Kevin Ding is, like, asking him about the offense and the struggles. And that's where Gary Stevens gives him the famous line, uh, you, you can't expect me to make chicken salad out of chicken bleep. And, you know, for a coach to say that, dude, that's... That's a total indictment. <laughs> that is just, I mean, it's golden for the reporter. But, yeah, it was Kevin Ding, Miami Herald, and it was very, I want to say, very early 2000s. Things are never the same after saying that in your locker room, right? Yeah, no. It's... Oh. It's tarnished forever. No. Gary Stevens was a trip, man. I like Gary. I like covering Gary Stevens. You know, when Gary Gary was, he's just a character. And when you would ask him a tough, I remember I pulled him aside a couple times, and you know I would ask him, and he'd like, oh come on, oh why are you doing this to me, oh come on. And we're like in the like on the side of the field, but we're away from everybody. But all of a sudden, when he's doing that, everybody's looking over like, oh, what did O do to him? <laughs> You're trying to keep it under the radar, and he's throwing it up there. Yeah, because I'm, I'm trying to get some sound that's not with the, with the group. You know what I mean? Not with the gangbang. Not with all the other media members, because then they're going to get my sound. And so I was trying to get my own sound bite. And I was I was trying to and I was I was actually doing a pregame interview with him, and so some of the questions in there sometimes we will use some of those sound bites because if they say something newsworthy, and Gary Stevens is a guy that will speak his mind. Uh, I like Gary a lot, man. I, I really do. I like him a lot. He's a cool dude. At least for me, I'm not I'm not I can't speak for everybody. I can only tell you that personally, I like Gary Stevens.